is the study of energy transfer and chemical reactions. Not bad. My handwriting is a lot, a little, not a lot. I won't say a lot. A little bit better on paper, but I'll work on it. So here's how I usually abbreviate reactions, RxNS. Okay. I don't know why. Yeah, I got to learn how to switch colors too. All right, so now I'm ready. Okay, and I'll put down this or physical processes. In Gen Chem 1, if you remember, we said that any time a chemical reaction or a physical change occurs, energy is transferred. Okay, any time, every time. All right? And so thermochemistry just studies that. How much energy do you get out of a reaction? How much energy do you have to put into a reaction? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to have a, a bigger a deeper dive into the energy transfer uh, of chemical reactions. All right. Hmm. All right, so one thing we have to define is energy. Okay, if we're going to talk about energy transfer of chemical reactions or physical processes, we're going to have to define energy. And so if you look up energy in a dictionary, which I know no one would ever do, so if you Googled energy or Bing, Okay, don't want to cut down on internet search. Yahoo, okay, if you Yahoo energy, it would tell you that energy is the capacity to do work. Got a lot more colors at my disposal now, too. It's going to get crazy. Okay. I, won't I won't run out of ink, too. I won't lose time. All right. Uh, so, energy is capacity to do work. Do you, what, do you know what no one has ever said after reading that? Oh, now I understand what work is, or energy is. You know That, that definition doesn't really tell me anything. Okay? If I'm trying to figure out what energy is, reading that, I'm like, oh, uh, okay, well... That's not really tell me a lot. So the way I have to think about energy, okay, are the two types of energy, okay? Two types of energy. Which are, what are they? Kinetic energy and potential energy? All right, potential energy. and kinetic energy. <coughs> Who remembers what the definition of potential energy that we used in Gen Chem 1? Way back at the beginning of Gen Chem 1. Energy due to position, perfect. And of course, uh, what was kinetic energy? Energy, energy in motion, that's good. Or due to motion, that's fine. All right, so we know about those, and, if you, and we'll, we'll go over an example about the two types of energy to hopefully um, 
help you understand what they are, uh, but let's start talking about the other part of this, that energy is transferred. Okay, that's what we're actually studying, the energy transfer. Not the types of energy, but how energy is transferred and how much energy is transferred. That's the other thing that's going to be important. Okay, So there are two ways that energy can be transferred. So two ways energy can be transferred. And they are heat and, wait for it, work. You got it, yeah. Heat and work. All right, so heat is also called thermal energy. And all it is is a type of, the second type of uh, energy, kinetic energy, just at the microscopic scale. The transfer in the kinetic energy at the molecular level, okay? One molecule is bumping into another molecule, and the molecule with higher kinetic energy is going to cause the molecule with lower kinetic energy to start moving a little bit more. Okay, so it's the transfer of kinetic energy at the molecular level. So yeah, we abbreviate kinetic energy as Ke. All right, so we, we, we went through, let me try to, we went through these examples in Gen Chem 1, but you know, if I put my hand on this monitor, it's been a little bit uh, on for a while, it feels a little warm. So what's going on? The plastic in this monitor is transferring kinetic energy to my hand. The molecules in this plastic are moving. We got kinetic energy. They're doing the solid dance, and they're bumping into the molecules in my, you know, in my skin cells. And every time they bump into my molecules in my hand, they transfer some of that kinetic energy. Now my molecules in my hand are moving a little bit faster. Okay, and so that's one way we can transfer energy is through heat. Okay, the other uh, way we transfer energy is just a. Uh, macroscopic version of this same idea, okay, but on, okay, on a macroscopic level. Instead of two molecules pushing each other, when we do work, a whole bunch of molecules push another whole bunch of molecules. Like if I open up a door, all the molecules in my arm and muscles are pushing all the molecules and atoms in that door. And usually we measure this uh, as force. Definitely got to change color. <laughs> okay, so work, W equals, we're applying a force across a distance, that's how we would measure it, but all we're doing is transferring kinetic energy at the macroscopic scale. All right, so uh, my usual example for this <laughs> and I don't have a lot of room, but we can do it, okay? So we think of a ball rolling downhill. Get a ball at the top of the hill, okay? If I give that ball a little nudge, what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna roll down the hill. Why does it roll down the hill? 
gravity. Okay? So gravity is one of the four forces of nature. Okay? And that is what gives the potential energy, the force of nature. Okay? One way you can get potential energy is from gravity. And the higher you are, okay, energy due to position, when we talk about higher you are, the relative position to Earth, the higher this ball is, the further away it is from Earth, the higher the potential energy it has. Okay? So we could say that, of course, if we gave that ball a little push, okay, it would roll from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Okay. And you could say it rolls down the hill because of gravity, and it's perfectly acceptable uh, explanation. But we could expand a little bit further in terms of energy, is that the reason why it rolls downhill is that at the top of the hill it has high potential energy. And at the bottom of the hill, it has low potential energy. And that's pretty much how nature works. We tend to go from high potential energy to low potential energy. Right? Now, we also, and we'll talk about this more, we learned about in Gen Chem 1, the law of conservation of energy, right? Remember that? Law can, or energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Right? <laughs> so, if I start out at high potential energy, units we're going to eventually use are joules. So if I say 100 joules of potential energy up here, and now it only has 50 joules, where did that 50 joules of energy go? Transfer, where? The heat, one thing is heat, okay, and then just the other one is kinetic energy of the ball. Okay, so the kinetic energy of that ball, which could have been used to do some work Okay, that ball could have hit something um, and drove it across a distance. I don't know. It could happen. Uh, but that would be doing work. So that's the macroscopic scale kinetic energy transfer. But yeah, so the transfers to, uh, to the kinetic energy of the ball and then also heat. There's going to be friction with the air and then also friction with the ground, right? So energy transferred. Uh, to potential energy transfer to kinetic energy. Both as the macroscopic example, the ball rolling downhill, and also the microscopic, it's transferring heat to the ground and to the air. Okay, so when I think about both of those together, potential energy coming from a force and kinetic energy, just either big things moving or little things moving, um, that's what I can think of and wrap my head around and say what energy is. Okay? And of course, eventually it can do work, and that's you know, a very important thing to think about, but this, at a uh, fundamental level, that helps me think about it a little bit more. All right, so when we talk about energy, usually, Right, there's the two types, potential energy and kinetic energy. And the uh, total, the sum of those two is what we call internal energy. So internal energy is E. And it is the sum.